Check us out now. Just Low, the persona, all right, the rapper. Basically, I'm just Logan. I uh, grew up in uh, Cape Coral, Florida. Uh, mom and dad in the house, thankfully. Uh, grew up with a little sister. Uh, went all the way through high school. Uh, just coming off last December, getting my little college degree. And basically just right now trying to figure out how to navigate this music thing because it's one of those things where there's no set blueprint, you know what I mean? So I'm kind of just trying to figure out his Logan and then figuring out how to transfer that, that same personality I always had, the same energy I always had into the persona just low, you know? So I went to a little small school up in Pennsylvania because I used to play basketball. So they got me up, up there on a little athletic scholarship, you know? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So basically I was up there for three and a half years I played basketball the first two, and then I started rapping. That's my, my, my manager, Sam. He, uh, I used to, we used to freestyle all the time in his little Mazda. And I, I was like, yo, maybe I should like, try to record something. Found out they had a studio on campus. Next day, quit the basketball team. Here we are. It was like one of those things where my pops played basketball, was a basketball coach. Mm -hmm. So it was like, yeah, like take it as far as I, I can, but I was never driven after a goal like I am with this music shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's when I knew when I found out the studio, I was like, I don't really be caring about basketball like that, so I might as well put my efforts into something I love and passionate about, you know? So when you stepped into the studio, yeah. what field did you get? Was it like, okay, I was destined to do this, or was it just... Yeah, not in the beginning, though. So I've always been a person who's... Uh, I value opinion a lot. I like other people around, so I like taking the different energies, and sometimes that can fuck up your confidence, especially when you're trying to create something out of nothing, you know what I'm saying? And put, your, put yourself out there, be a little vulnerable. So when I first started off, I was timid, real timid. So I'd go in the studio and like, I'd be hearing niggas rap around me, like knowing I could smoke them. You know what I'm saying? Like the shit on my pen, like I know it's better, but I was timid, but lately, you know, you just had to I just had to take that step and level up and just kind of, so now when I walk in the studio, it's, it's business. You know what I'm saying? The pressure's on, let's get it. So basically me and Sam, my manager, we would, uh, we would dead ass like sophomore, junior year in high school, we would just drive around in his car and like hours, like everyone else partying, doing all that shit. And we would just drive around the city for three, four hours, run his whole gas tank out. And uh, we actually connected over uh, acid rap, like way back, you know, back when it was just a mixtape, not like everywhere, you know. And yeah, it just started from freestyling and it got to the point where we'd be in a car and we just put beats on and freestyle whole songs. And then it got to the point where I was like, all right, a little tweaking here and there, you know, get the pen out and start writing, you know. So majority, I don't really even do studio time anymore just because like I'm a very frugal person. And I, like very frugal, I'm very frugal. So like financially it hurt every time I try to go to the studio, get one song done in four hours and throw like 250 down. You know what I'm saying? So I just put a little investment aside. I got me a little annoyment for the room, some rocket speakers. And now I just record in my room. So freestyle, if I like something, I just run with it, finish it. That kind of thing, you know? And then it got to the point where it was a little corny. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, a little corny. Stitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly, exactly. People love that plan word. So we kind of had to flip it. And I was like, you know, I might as well, like I said earlier, blend Logan with the persona. So it's just me. It's just love. I don't know. It, it started off with that kind of vibe where, like, let's put as many words in the song as we can. Mm -hmm. But I'm from South Florida. So, like, YNW Melly, like, a big inspiration. Like, but he just be singing, you know? So I spent a summer, like two summers ago, kind of just listening to that kind of music and trying to adapt and trying to fit my sound into it. So now it's to the point where I be making songs that sound like Cole and then I'll make a song like New Pajamas that sound kind of like a, a, a mix between like a little gunner pocket, a little, little baby pocket. So I appreciate the comparisons, obviously, but. So what made you want to adapt to listening to his sound or to that sound period? Just my love for creating. Just, just pushing myself to a new limit. You know, I could have been complacent and just started killing people with just cold song after cold song, you know what I mean? But it got to the point where I was just like, all right, I'm gonna push myself a little bit. So I hit him with the gun. And then I also dropped a song about three months ago that's just a rock and roll song. Cause I was like, I was doing all the rap for like a couple months. I was like, yo, let's just try something weird. Cause my mom grew up on like the Judas Priest and that kind of like hard rock, you know, like hard rock. So yeah, it's just a love to create, you know, try something new. Since we are independent, I have the obviously the love to create, and nobody tell me how to create. You know what I'm saying? So while I can, and I hopefully always can, I don't want to necessarily just throw myself in a genre now when I got complete control. You know? Would you sign a deal? Or would you remain independent? It's one of those things where I never want to kill an opportunity before it even presents itself. 
I just see and hear, like I study the game, you know, you gotta study the game. And you just hear time and time again about artists just being fucked over, just just flat out, or you, you basically sign away and they take all your creative control. So I'm kind of just riding the wave as long as I can because, I mean, I got that degree in business, so I understand how negotiation works. So the more I can bring to the table down the road, the longer I wait it out. I mean, if I want to sign a deal, it'll be pretty favorable, I believe. Have you heard about a 360 deal? Of course, yeah. What's your views on them? So I listen to a lot of Joe Budden podcast. So, um, yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, 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 so it's my, it's, I love that shit. But basically, when they talk about 360 deals, they usually do it in the context about like 10, 15 years ago, where it was one of those things where you sign, it's done so. Like, you're, you're the label's product now. You're the plant. Like, yeah. that's it. Like, there's no other way around it. But nowadays, I don't, this shit just so weird. The music industry just so weird right now, just with streaming and just how. Yeah, Social media just came in here and basically said, like, obviously with labels, like, they still have autonomy when it comes to most of it. But I can make a pretty big-ass name for myself just using my phone if I'm strategic and consistent, you know. So, yeah, I don't really fuck with 360s. <laughs> How has your city react to your new music? When I first started, you know, it's one of those things when you, when you first come out and you show people you have some sort of gift, everyone jumps on right away. Right. Like, you post that first Twitter video you rapping when no one can know you knew you could rap people are like holy shit where did this come from kind yeah. of thing and with it when I was Lilo we rode that wave a little bit but I was real inconsistent at being like a public face right. you know what I'm saying like I did a lot of shit behind the scenes that nobody knows about but I wasn't telling nobody right, right? so now I'm kind of doing a little bit more of like the yo I'm really out here I'm really doing this and it's, it's been good Fort Myers Cape Coral Naples region is, is booming right now like when people think South Florida, they automatically go down to like Broward, Pompano, Miami, you know what I mean? But that Fort Myers scene, Cape Coral scene, it's, it's on the come up when people, people from Fort Myers and Cape Coral are realizing it. And the creatives in the area, we really band in together and we're trying to get everybody out. So I actually did my first show, kind of crazy. I went to that school in Pennsylvania. It was a small like Christian school. But I did an opener for Lecrae. It was my first show. And after like... I only had a couple records out on SoundCloud, no projects, no, if you didn't know, no new pajamas, none of that. And I had kids coming up to me after the school, uh, show asking me questions. Like, yo, I'm an up and coming artist, this, that, and the third. And I had to take a second, it's like, yo, I am you. You know what I mean? Like, we in the yeah. same position. Yeah. But it's just one of those things where like, and Sam be pushing me a lot, just like, I gotta understand that my music does reach out to people and people reach out back. So I gotta keep it up for the people that are listening, for real, you know? Like I say, it's just bedroom sounds. Like I just literally be making this shit in my room mm -hmm. and people want to hear it. And what would you feel, yeah. well, what would you say separates you from other artists in your area? My versatility. I mean, that's a cliche word, but I mean, I grew up on the cold. So if it comes down to it, if we break the pen out on some soul shit, I can give you a 16 and you, you'll be like, okay, he can rap. Yeah. But then when it comes down to it, if I get with like my boy Tay, was more on like that, that the wave, just smooth. Mm -hmm. I could still hit it with him. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. It's one of those things. Like versatility sounds so cliche. Yeah. But like just separation wise, I just feel like honestly, I haven't found a beat I can't hit yet. And it may not be a hit every time, but I'm gonna find a pocket in there somewhere. A lot of the time, I kind of have a voice that's not really super needs to be super auto tuned, mm -hmm. just because I'm not really. Going crazy on any runs or anything like that is pretty straightforward. Balance. I'm a I'm a habitual person. I have a consistent schedule, um, which allows me to kind of like cut and dry, plan shit out. So my consistency is just always there. And it, it's like when you balance that the habits, when you build good habits from the beginning, and then build that with a passion, it's, it's there's no limits. You know what I'm saying? When you're you're consistent enough to tell yourself, no, I ain't gotta go out on Friday night. I'm gonna stay back and get four hours in, even if it's just freestyling. You know what I mean? And it, it's, I'm thankful because I got a girl too, so like I ain't into going out. Like, the only reason I go out is listen to loud That's music. Why you really don't go out. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, I, the only reason I'll go out is just to rap, like the loud music. I fuck with that, but it ain't worth it for me. What are your views on today's music? It's beautiful because it's become the number one genre. Hip hop is just a brand now too. Like whatever the, the hottest rapper's doing, clothes, uh, what he's talking about in the songs, everybody want to do it now. It's not just a select demographic. 
everybody trying to be like everybody else, mm. which is cool because it's bringing more attention to hip hop as an art. But at the same time, a lot of those those early roots of what hip hop actually stood for are kind of being lost a little bit. And it's, it's, it's a, I guess it's just a sacrifice you have to pay for the, the stage it's on now, where it's, it's the number one genre in the world. You know what I mean? Like you go anywhere in the world, you're gonna hear at least five of the top hip hop songs in the world right now. We've been talking about this lately because I'm, I'm, I'm not the type of person, the way, the way I was raised, we don't dwell. Like my family, we don't dwell on shit. It happens and we move on from it, for better and for worse. You know what I'm saying? So like with negative energy, I don't dwell on it, which yeah. is dope, because yeah. it, it allows me to be consistent, you know what I'm saying? Oh, exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So you, you, you're consistent, you're past it, it's over. But with positives, it's the same way. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't be enjoying my successes. So like with accomplishments, like shit, like I'm doing numbers I never thought I would do. Right. Like if you didn't know Project, about to read 50,000. Like to me, that's like if you would have told me that two years ago, I'd be like, "You lying? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Like that's crazy." But like, I don't know. I gotta start training myself. So I would say that probably just the fact that my debut is about to do fifty thousand off off organics, no helps from nobody else, just me and a small team mm -hmm. back in the Cape. So that's exciting, and also just accomplishments wise, is I'm just excited for what we we built over those past three years of just kind of. Locking in and trying to figure it out and wait for the right moment. Uh, yeah, you put me on the spot with that. We've been talking about that too. How important is yeah. it to have a team? Oh, it's, it's vital. It's essential. There's no way you do it. Like you, Everyone has their the downfalls. Oh. You know what I'm saying? My downfall is social media. Like I've never been a social media person. It's just I don't like giving my energy to that because there's just so much craziness going on. You know what I mean? But as an up and coming rapper, that's where you gotta be. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you can't just make the music and have the music. Like, it's gotta be heard. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be good at social media, and mm -hmm. that's that's goes back to the team. Sam over there just locked in on the social media, and he's he finally was just like, "Yo, buddy, like you gotta listen to me on the social media thing." <laughs> and I'm like, "All right, I'm gonna voice my opinion, but I'm rolling with you. Yeah. Like, well, let's do it. Like, I'm rolling with you." So yeah, absolutely, you gotta have a team because you'll never be able to see the full picture. Just